Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. This is actually the weekly recap. This has been an absolute crazy week. We've had stories about how Trump could actually change things up. And it was from Chris Wright and say, hey, let's get, let's go after ending energy poverty. And he would be really a heads up on that one. We've had other great stories. We've had the tanker stories. We've had being blown up by the, the Houthis. And then we've also had Ukraine attacking oil assets in Russia. So buckle up. We're going to turn this over to the staff. And we've also re just released out Liz Miller, founder and executive chair of Deep Isolation. She is a wonderful discussion about nuclear and nuclear waste management. And I mean, this was a really good, good conversation. So thank you. Buckle up. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We want to talk to you. Have an absolutely wonderful Saturday. China's demand for oil needs nearing its peak. This is pretty interesting from the standpoint of there's kind of two competing camps. So you've got the camps that could care less about China saying that their demand is not necessarily influential as much as it used to be on where oil prices are going. You've got another camp that is absolutely extremely worried about what China is doing. And Irina Slav over at oilprice.com breaks down what I think is a really good look at, well, what if China's oil demand is peaking. If you fall in the camp of, hey, China and their demand of, you know, for all types of refined products, not just crude oil, but all different types of products, if you believe that's critical, critical to where oil prices will go, I tend to fall in that camp. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. But we could be a point where China's oil demand may have peaked. And I think this is a great article that kind of lays out the case for that. So kind of the top three headlines here. China's oil imports in July were down 12% from June and 3% from July of 2023, which kind of raises those concerns mainly about the economic health of that. There's a couple factors that they claim are going into that. The rise of EVs. The shift to LNG in trucks, which I think is probably the head, the biggest one out of all of these. And then finally, a slowdown in manufacturing and real estate are kind of the three big buckets that are contributing to this trend. You know, there are some analysts, again, on one side saying that this slowdown is temporary, while others are arguing that China's oil demand actually may have already pinked, which clearly is going to have significant implications for the overall global oil markets. It's it's pretty interesting. So there's a, there's a couple things here. Obviously, as, as I just mentioned, in July, China imported about 12% less oil than it did in June. And in June of 2024, that was 3% less than it was a year ago, which is, which is pretty interesting. And this coincided with a fall in prices. So you can definitely see how there's some correlation there. Another interesting note is that India in July passed China as the biggest buyer of sanctioned Russian crude at a rate close to 2.1 million barrels per day, which represents a 4.2 monthly increase and about a 12% annual increase. You know, the other second or that the third bucket that's talked about, we'll kind of skip around. Obviously, we, we, we talked about and, and we just covered, you know, the actual import of crude oil. But in the manufacturing real estate, we all know China is going through an extremely rough real estate and manufacturing growth, if only because we saw with, with Evergrande and the bank situation going on there, hundreds of billions of dollars in loans, you know, out to a place where, well, we may or may not have people to live there. It's, it's in a precarious position, not that they're going through their own version of our 2008 financial crisis, but it could be getting there. And then this is something that our good friends over at Reuters, Clyde Russell, he actually posed this question of, well, has China oil demand not already peaked? You know, his big notice was that China's record import rate for crude oil last year and the perception that, and I'm going to read straight from the article, and the perception that most analysts and traders appear to believe that this year's slowdown is temporary. The question I'm asking is, what if it isn't? Super interesting. So Russell, go ahead and points out that for the last 19 years, China oil imports have, have been basically on a straight upward trajectory before obviously dropping in 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic, but picking up basically in 2022 and in 2023, reached an all-time high of about 11.3 million barrels per day last year. If you're a China oil bull, that was all the info you need to say, hey, we're back, baby. 
but we're seeing a drop off this year. And so the real question is, okay, is it going to come back? Again, there's the EV story, which I, I don't see EVs as being like the largest reason why their oil demand is struggling. Obviously, you know, if, if you're moving to an electric, if you're moving to an electric vehicle, you're getting your, you're getting your power via electricity. A lot of that is either coal or natural gas. So yes, obviously oil demand could drop a little bit from that. I think the biggest thing that we talked that people aren't talking about, which this article brings up, is the replacement of diesel with liquefied natural gas in trucks. Most things around the country, if you've ever driven on a highway, not just in China, but in the United States, it's all trucks. And if those are going to be moving towards LNG, that's a large factor of kind of, that's a huge chunk of the overall, quote unquote, gasoline demand that's now shifting to natural gas. And, you know, there's, as we know, there's plenty of natural gas to go around. So the incentive is there to do that again you we've got the manufacturing and real estate stuff you know basically with this you know what irena finishes up by saying is what i'll read from the article here, what this means is that china may not return to its path of ever consuming growth volumes of crude to be fair however it was unrealistic to expect it would china relies on imports for close to 60 percent of its consumption and china does and doesn't like to rely on imports so much, so it makes sense to do everything to reduce this dependency by encouraging alternative energy sources. In other words, China's peak oil demand may be here, or it may be around the corner, but it's only a matter of time before that peak oil comes. The sooner the market adjusts, the sooner it should start paying attention to other factors determining global oil prices, such as supply, which we'll cover in the next article. But if you fall in the camp of where China oil demand is a main driver of prices, well, buckle up because it could get crazy. State rankings, electric vehicles per capita in the United States. Let's cover this here a little bit. Being forced to drive an electric car, Americans are not going to like. California leads the nation in electric vehicle adoption with over 1.1 million EVs and the highest per capita ownership. Washington, Hawaii, Oregon, and follow California as EV adoption hotspots while Mississippi and North Dakota lag behind. California's expensive charging infrastructure with over 15,000 stations supports its EV leadership. But the visual, there's two charts that I want to bring up here. First one is by Vorani. This is the EV adoption by state in 2023. This is an amazing chart. If you take a look at EVs per 100,000 people, California's top of the list, Washington, Hawaii, Oregon, then Colorado, Nevada, and Texas is down around the middle of the pack. And I don't even see Oklahoma on this list. Oklahoma didn't even make it. So that's pretty funny. Now, Mississippi has the fewest electric vehicles uh, proportionally with only 110 EVs per 100,000 people. California with the highest number of charging stations. But Miss Producer, if you could bring this next chart, chart showing three different Tesla models. First one is rural America. Take a look at that beautiful Tesla. In the words of Donald Trump, that's a beautiful Tesla. That's a beautiful thing. Take a look at Chicago's Tesla. It's got bullet holes in it. You got to have, I, I want me a Tesla to drive through Chicago. So that is definitely Chicago worthy. But now let's take a look at Detroit. Another wonderful blue run city. Detroit Tesla. I'm sorry. I got really tickled at that one and had to make sure that we put this on this podcast today. So if you're listening to this podcast, there are three different ones. One's full of just a beautiful bright red Tesla. I would love to have one. Second one down, a silver Tesla. It's got bullet holes in it. You're, that's from Chicago. But if you're from Detroit, it looks like a dumpster with slopey roofs. So it's actually very, very funny. Oil prices soar as geopolitical ri risks rise rapidly. Right now, as I'm recording this on Monday afternoon, WTI is at 77.32. Brent is at 81.33. 
So we take a look at the prices. Israel and Hezbollah traded strikes on Sunday in the biggest military exchange between the two since 2006. Reports where I saw some reports were like 40 different airstrikes where Israel took in preemptive strikes. Oil prices spiked dramatically Monday morning with Brent above 81 and WT 77. So also Russia targets Ukrainian energy infrastructure in huge missile and drone attack. This one is they're getting serious over there. And again, my hearts go out to the Ukrainian and Russian people all impacted. This could have been avoided. President Zelensky had signed the ceasefire years ago, and I am just sorry that it did not stick. Libya Eastern government to halt oil production and exports. This is another big reason when you take a look at the government to halt oil production and export. Libya has got some real problems going on in their oil side of the business. The renewable accounted for 14.6 of global energy consumption in 2023. Michael, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that renewables is a marketing term for renewable energy that is not renewable nor sustainable without subsidies. So let's just get ready to rumble into this. The wind and solar consumption reached 14.6 in 2023. China led the world in renewable energy production and capacity add-ons. China just led the world in coal, LNG. I mean, they did everything. So I think that that was pretty funny. But look at this chart. Miss Producer, if you could bring this chart up, that chart is a hockey stick. I mean, that thing is like starting in 2009 to 2023. It is nuts. 346 gigawatts of new capacity smashing the 2022 record of 67 percent china contributed quarter on quarter growth europe made significant strides at 56 gigawatts of solar holy smokes batman yeah i mean i think people would say oh 14.6 that's not that much it's probably what it should be is the funny part well it's the cost that we're not talking about when we sit back and take a look we put out all at 14.6% of the energy mix. How much did that 14.6 cost? Oh, I well, bet absolutely. That- I, I say this with oil production. It's not how much oil a well produces. It's how much you paid to go get that. Exactly. We spot LNG shipping rates and European prices continue to drop. So Speaking of exactly what we're talking about, that regional difference between what's going on in the United States with natural gas and what's going on abroad, this was super interesting. Both Pacific and Atlantic LNG shipping units have experienced a massive decline. This is according to Spark's commercial analyst, Kasim Afghan. Spark 30's Atlantic rates experienced a second week-on-week decrease, falling by $8,250 to a total of $61,500 day which was pretty crazy that was up over a hundred thousand earlier last year he said it's almost this it's the largest week on week decrease in over a month and marks almost a fifteen thousand dollar decline in the atlantic rates over the last two weeks you know early in september october of 2023 rates were almost at two hundred thousand a day a little about 180 thousand so we've almost seen a hundred percent drop in those prices you know the the front month delivery is eleven dollars and seventy seven cents for liquid LNG on an MMBTU basis. So wow. if you can get your LNG to Europe, you'll get paid a decent amount too. It's why the export capacity is so big. And why why do you think they want to try to build LNG facilities here? Because it ain't worth nothing here, but it's definitely worth something over in Europe. It's it's pretty unbelievable. Gas storages sitting over in the EU is about eighty eight point four seven percent as of August fourteenth and as and of and that you know, corresponds with 91.56% full, basically a year prior to that. Pretty unbelievable. In Asia, the LNG cargoes settling for October, $13.75. That's on an MMBTU basis. Pretty unbelievable. Front month, JKM, which is their spot natural gas. You're on 1446, Stu. So pretty unbelievable. Last quote I'll read, quote, Chinese buyers are now predominantly cautious and remain in wait and see mode regarding winter cargo procurement doesn't matter those are still great prices so gives you you know if you're a 
you're a U.S. natural gas trader. I'm sorry. Things have been tough for you. Maybe you try moving to Amsterdam. Yeah, or start selling LNG. If, if you can get it over there, it'd be great. Why Trump would be better for the climate than Kamala. This one's kind of funny. And Miss Producer, if you could bring this picture up. I ask X Grok, I ask Grok on X, however you want to phrase that, create a picture of Kamala Harris and President Trump on a debate stage. And this picture actually kind of cracked me up. She almost looks a little bit like Michelle Obama, a cross between a cross-eyed Harris and Michelle Obama. Not sure. I got tickled at it. That's, that's just a straight picture. I thought it was kind of fun. But let's go through this article. The Democrat supports extreme climate policies. Climate change happens, folks. It, it happens. And when geoengineering is involved, like chemtrails, just like RFK Jr. is asked and said he wants to stop, that's geoengineering. And so when you think, okay, climate change, it changes, but let's get rid of the pollution factor, and that will make all the difference in the world. A common sense approach to energy policy will lead to a stronger and more secure America while cutting carbon emissions. Yay. Vice President Kamala Harris, though, has endorsed the far less worst climate schemes. Uh, she was an early co-sponsor of the 93 trillion Green New Deal has called for banning of fracking. She has not come back out and said, oh, she for fracking, uh, point blank said, I will allow fr fracking. Hadn't said it. That's because she hadn't had an interview yet. So it's as eight. 29 she has not had an interview so and nobody's asked her about that american natural gas exports displace higher emitting gas and coal use abroad reducing global emissions the fact that the harris biden administration has still filing to cancel drilling in alaska and also banning the lng and they're filing again to get this done it is again they're ruining the opportunity for countries to take advantage of great, low-cost U.S. natural gas. Natural gas is one of the biggest reasons the United States has lowered our CO2 output, and we need to allow other countries to have the same advantage in order to do that. Regulations, not Republicans, are the biggest barrier to deploying clean energy in this country and out-competing China. Couldn't agree with that one more the u.s economy this one line i couldn't agree with more three times more carbon efficient than as china but americans producers aren't rewarded boy you, that is an understatement trump administration should remand china for all of its unfair practices tariffs this was in the uh, washington times a second trump term that cuts red tape will make America great again. And I do respect President Trump for his drill, baby, drill, but that's not the only thing that we've got to do.